The limb girdle muscular dystrophies are the fourth most common form of muscular dystrophy overall. These are all genetic conditions. These cause weakness in the hips and the shoulders that's progressive and uniformly at this point actually they're without effective treatment. So these are progressive, they cause you know, significant morbidity. A lot of uh, patients end up in wheelchairs, for example, or end up with problems with their heart or their breathing that may affect the length of their life. And about four years ago, we identified the limb girl muscular dystrophy. Um, there's actually 32 different um, genetic subtypes of limb girl muscular dystrophy. Of those, about 15 are actually amenable to a full gene replacement therapy. The current generation of gene therapy uses naturally occurring viruses. So what you do is you, you basically take the gene that's missing in the patient, you stick it in the virus, you stick the virus in the patient, um, and replace the gene that's missing. So when you do that, there are some safety risks to patients. These, besides going to the muscle, these go to the liver and so they can cause limber damage. Researchers that we work with have developed new synthetic viruses that are more muscle targeting and less targeting the liver. I'm a clinician first, um, and I see patients with limb girl muscular dystrophy um, all the time. I'm very motivated to um, move these into clinical trials. Uh, and it became very clear that the only way to do that is actually to form a startup. BCU as an institution uh, has a firm commitment to um, you know, developing transformative therapies for patients. And this is one of the instances where they've uh, provided a good amount of support, uh, both in terms of our clinical research and, um, and uh, lab research, including uh, the recruitment of uh, appropriate faculty to help us um, bring this over the, over the hump. Um, and then, you know, with tech transfer specifically, you know, they've done a really nice job in terms of uh, supporting the initial startup and um, providing a lot of the uh, resources that uh, you need to kind of form a company and to, and to get through those initial regulatory steps and clinical trials. We just, we're very excited to uh, move uh, myogene therapies through the startup process. I think, you know, our center and the, the company have a strong commitment uh, to the patient. That was frankly why it was uh, formed and started. Um, and our intention is to use our expertise and resources to bring these treatments to patients.